it's your girl Jada Rain and welcome back to the third episode of No Brew Shit. Before we get into the topic for today, I want to introduce a new guest and then somebody you're already familiar with. So new guest, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Terrence and that's it. Nothing really. You, ain't got nothing. <laughs> I, you know, where you go to school, what you study? Oh, uh, I go to school at IU. Um, I'm studying theater with a minor in game design and uh, I'm a Nicki Minaj stan. Boy, that's gonna make for some good conversation. And you guys are familiar with Kayla. Hi, y'all. I'm Kayla. You know, I'm a senior here at Indiana University, majoring in journalism. And that's pretty much what you need to know. I'm also an artist. Yeah. Boop. All right. Well, what I'm sipping on is the brown sugar latte. So that's the drink for the day. And then for the topic, we're talking about stand culture. The term of stand came from the 2000 video stand, of course, by Eminem. And it was a video that detailed this obsessive fan of his. Um, and then from there, this idea of stand culture kind of came about. But it really kind of got popularized now with the event of social media and things of that nature. So we're kind of talking about, you know, what stand culture looks like for us now. And first, I want to kind of ask you guys, are you familiar with stand culture? I would hope that you are if you're here. And if so, what do you know about stand culture right now? What are your, some of your just general thoughts before we dive in? Um, yes, I know about stand culture, and I think my experience so far with stand culture has been very good. Um, <laughs> very, very, <laughs> very good, very eventful. I mean, I love it. So, what do you think about it? So just general thoughts. Um, I actually like respect stand culture culture to an extent because it's just like they'll do the work that I'm not going to because I'm more of a fan. Like they'll know the receipts, the dates, the, 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 this, this, and that. I don't know all the info. Like I'm just there. Mm -hmm. So like they do the work I'm not going to. So I respect it in a sense. So, right. Yeah. What fandoms are you guys like? Do you know like the name of these fandoms or which ones are you familiar with? I'm familiar with the Barb's, of course. <laughs> 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 and then there's like there's different ones for different artists like like the army the navy yeah the army yeah. the navy the, the beehive the navy is kind of chill though yeah the navy is, the navy the is, is chill. chill they be act, they be begging for that album for Rihanna though okay <laughs> this, is, this is stress did they you see exactly, that uh, she's tired of them <laughs> yes she's not about to make an album she's about to she's doing everything else but that because yeah. they like press her like, Mm -hmm. Okay, but we need it. See, that's where the stand was needed. We need the Navy to get the new album. So you're kind of right. You're kind of right with that one. So are you, do you guys feel like you're a part of a particular fandom, or do you feel like you stand anybody? Right. And if so, who? I stand multiple people, actually. Multiple? People? Multiple. Multiple people, multiple groups. I love it. So who do you stand? Um, Nicki, Nicki Minaj, of course. Um, I stand a lot of K-pop groups. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, um, like smaller artists, like um, if you know Isaac Dunbar, I stand him. I stand like Troy Sivan, Con um, Conan Gray, um, Reese King, stand, you know. Okay, I'm gonna come back to that. And then who do you stand? Well, you know, I love like female rap and stuff like yes. that. So, like, I'm a huge fan of a lot of those artists, but my all time favorite, Jungle Pussy, like, I get a little like. Danny, you know? <laughs> she, said, she got a little giggle, she said, oh. Yeah, like, I get a little into it. Like, I literally be all up in her comments, like, yes, like, give me more. Like, I be seeing your, I be seeing your comments pop up, because I'm following that video, like, Kayla, bye, bye. Uh, Instagram be snitching on me. You can see me in her comments. They be like, I see you in Jungle Pussy comments today, like. <laughs> they like, like, okay, that's what you say. <laughs> so how do you choose, like, who you stand? Like, what is it based on? I mean, yeah, you like their music, but is but like, you could like somebody's music over here and think they have dope music, but you don't necessarily stand them. So like, how do you decide? Well, for me, it's a, a lot of different um, like factors that that goes goes into it. It's like, okay, yeah, I like whatever you originally do. If it's like um, me seeing a, a model or something, I'm like, oh yeah, I like these. But then I try to get more into their actual personality and their interviews and like how they are on um, social media and kind of like communicate with people. Because if I don't like like that the personality aspect of you then yeah. no i'll i'll stream your music on on youtube i'll go on apple music and give you 25 cents and that's about it but ain't nothing else so it's the money the money aspect the support monetarily and then it's also it's well, it's the the money aspect is more of, of less like i'll give you money because i like you and right. that and that and like i just want to like be able to support the the art and the effort that you're trying to do because I like that, but if I don't, um, 
Oh, that's a lie. There are people I don't like <laughs> that I do stream. Like, I don't like um, like Cardi B all that much, but I will stream a. I will stream Bodak Yellow. So like, but it's a, it's a lot a lot of different things. Like this, for me to actually stand, you actually have to like, kind of like your your the personality that you're putting out and like more stuff that you're doing other than just like. Your music and like or your two pictures that you took on a in a in a magazine or something like that. What about you? Like, how do you choose to stand somebody? Um, I feel like if you're like personality, like I think it's a personality thing. Like if it really resonates with me, I feel like with Jungle Pussy, it's like yeah, she's a female rapper, but like her lyricism kind of speaks to me in a different way, like. Um, and then, like, also, like, she's, like, very, like, healthy, like, the life choices she makes and stuff like that kind of inspires me, you know, like, I'm vegetarian now and stuff like that. Like, she just does, like, certain things, like, I don't know, I just feel like she's, like, a hero. Like, I don't know, like, she just, like, the way she, like, expresses herself, like, it, like, resonates with me, it resonates with me in a, such a way, like, especially as a black woman, like, this black woman and her, like, being unapolog unapologetically herself inspires me to do the same. So I, that's yeah. why I stand her that much is because, like, her doing whatever, wearing whatever she wants, being however she wants, and, like, just being very, like, transparent in, like, who she is kind of, like, makes me want to do the same. I feel like a lot of other artists might not be as real as they are, like, with their music. I feel like her music, the music Jungle Pussy is the same as Jungle Pussy without the music to okay. me, you know. Sometimes artists, like, are different than their music, and I feel like across the scale, like, she is, like, unapologetically herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely think, feel like it's needed to stand, especially black female artists, mm -hmm. because they don't get the same amount of support, especially when you're looking at, like, the landscape of, like, rap music, which is male dominated. So I do think like stand culture kind of helps propel these women in a way as well and give them the support that they deserve. So I think that's like a positive side of it. Um, one thing I kind of want to touch on, cause you guys both said like their personality, but is it like, do you really know these people just because they present something on social media? You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, is it the interviews that makes you feel like you're connected with who they are as a person? Do we really even know them as a person? You know what I'm saying? I mean, what do you think? I think to, to the extent that interviews are, you, you, you get a little bit of how they are, but, but of course they're gonna like try to present themselves in a, a better light to be like, right. oh, people are gonna see me say blah, 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 and I'm trying to get you to buy this. I'm trying to get people who aren't like stands of me to, um, to go to my concert or something because they know a couple songs or something like that, right? So like interviews itself doesn't really, is more of like a, a smaller aspect of it. But I think the way, because of social media and the way that that is, people are able to go on, on live and sit there for an hour or something like that and like actually have a conversation with you and you get you actually can like tell how they are so it's a little bit more of like of that and like how they actually interact with with their actual fans and stuff like that that I like I like that because I feel like with interviews and stuff from a marketing standpoint, it's something that you have to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas like you said, live seems a little bit more personal, but then people are using lives too to promote certain things and promote songs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So you have to wonder too, how, I guess it depends on the artist. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say because if you know like your, your, your come up or whatever has come through social media, yeah. you're, you're of course are gonna like do a, a lot more lives or of course gonna start trying to promote music on those lives. So you're like, oh, a lot of people have seen me because other people were like, oh, go to Terrence's social, um, thing, blah, 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 he talks about da, 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 and you go on there, right? So then that, that's a part of it, but at the same time, it, it still, I think, it still gives that room for them to be, be themselves in, in the same unapologetic way, because you can only be that, like, fake, like, like that for so long before you slip up and people see you, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. So, like, you can do, like, months and months of, of lies, but if you're gonna be like, hi, I'm super smiley all the time, mm, no, nah, sweetie, ain't nobody gonna see that. Right. You, people people gonna see through that, that, for sure. Yeah, realness definitely gives like longevity in the career sense, like yeah. people want to see the authentic you. And then like another thing is just like you, of course I don't know Jungle Pussy's in, right. like, in and out, like I don't know her like, like that, like that, but like kind of like, when you're listening to multiple albums, it's like you kind of like are growing with them. Like you can feel that growth in a yeah. sense. Like Jungle Pussy's first album and like maybe like singles and stuff like that mm -hmm. in the early stages of her career are completely different now. But like you, it's still like that same her in a sense. But like she, you can tell that she's evolved and matured in certain ways. Yeah. So like I feel like you're like kind of you kind of feel like that connection. Like you're growing as well. And like and maybe their music inspires you to grow in a certain direction. 
So I feel like, no, you don't know them like 100%. You don't know what they eat for breakfast. You don't know, like, you don't know all of that. But yeah. like, in a sense, you just like, I feel like people feel that connection because they, they see the growth. Like they can see that they feel like they're growing with them, like right. kind of thing. Yeah. Which kind of brings me to, we were just talking about this before the cameras um, came on, just talking about can you stand somebody that's dead or passed away because they're not in that social media area where mm -hmm. you can connect to them in that personal way. And for me, like, I guess I stand Tupac after y'all said mm. that I might be a stand. <laughs> and I guess I could kind of see that with what you're saying as far as like, even though he's not here, you feel connected to him through the music and mm -hmm. the evolution and the messages that he's speaking. Where do you distinguish between being a fan and a stand? Like, where is that line? Because I feel like stands sometimes can come into obsessive territory. Well, I think depending on like how you would define obsessive and, and stuff really is, is a is different like of course I'm not like trying to stalk this and any they do but they, make the other but look good. they already have that that <laughs> but people who 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 I believe I ain't got no degree in nothing that says anything about this but I think people who 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 are that obsessive and that um, and stalk people anyway already have that obsessive um, nature to begin with. So they they regardless of whatever are going to be obsessive over whatever it is. But I think because of the way that um, social media and everything is, you see those um, those cases of people a little bit more because like if you're like mm, that's weird, other people see it, you share it, and you're like mm, yeah that is weird, and then it just keeps going and getting it. So like it just becomes more popular because it's more like. Um, but it's like, where do you draw that line? Because you have some stance, and some people don't think there's anything wrong with this, like leaking people's numbers, harassing people yeah, online, that's, that's partaking in bullying. Like to me, even that is a little obsessive. You're not yeah. stalking the artist, but I think you're going too far for somebody who ain't really gonna hand you a check or really do anything yeah. for you at the end of the day, besides release great artistry. But you know, other than that. And even stands go a little as to far as to like, I don't know, like I, I remember seeing this tweet. I like remember when Beyonce was like, guys, stop being mean. They were like, mind your business. Like, <laughs> They'll like, turn on you. Yeah, exactly. Like, you tell Beyonce to buy her business? Like what? Like, <laughs> like sometimes, sometimes it goes like, you too take far. Like even like I agree I'll see people that like, they'll say like they stand somebody and then even they like, kind of like talk to that person like they crazy kind of like yeah. baby mother is another like female rapper that I follow and mm -hmm. like sometimes people like her fans fans let's call it we're calling them dad like they like talk to her like they're crazy and they demand work from her like like she's some type of like machine like she's still human I think that's the point yeah. I think like sometimes like there are I don't think all stands are this way but some stands make it look bad on the other ones like there are yeah. stands that like kind of forget like this person is a human too and they yeah. kind of like need some type of like respect as a human yeah, yeah you can't just talk to them like they're crazy demand work from them all the time as if like they're not working hard because as an artist like when you're pouring yourself into your craft like that's a lot of energy you're putting into that and you yes. have to restore that energy you can't just be pro producing albums back to back to back to back to because it's not going to be the same quality and you there's know? a lot of work that yeah goes into that. so there's that's why so many like artists go into hiding like within those years because they're trying to recover like i feel like in that in that space like when you're producing art like that, like, and I don't know, they, the stands be going too crazy. They be demanded, demanded, demanded. That's, that's why Rihanna tired. That's why yeah. she's tired. But it's like, if y'all want something good, <laughs> exactly. y'all have to wait on it. Exactly, be patient and stuff like that. And yeah. It's just like, you forget these people are human. They have lives like outside of their craft and mm -hmm. stuff like that. They might have issues going on. You never know. Yeah. So it's just like, they forget that they're human kind of right. thing. And as an artist, I feel like through that production period, when you're trying to, like you said, make good art, you know, you're pulling from different sources of inspiration. You need that time to kind of recoup and get things together, or you may not have that spark for that next good idea, and you don't want to put out, a lot of these artists, you know, they don't want to put out trash because they yeah. know the expectation is high for them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I kind of feel like with this stand culture too, um, well, what were you going to say? Because it seemed like you had a point, and I feel like I cut you off, so go ahead. I, I, I didn't already forgot. <laughs> 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 um, dang, I forgot my train of thought. I feel like with stand culture, it's sometimes it's not just the impact on the artist, it's also an impact on the other people that are affected. Like I remember that story, I think that's when they told Beyonce she needed to mind her business. business. I think it was this story, it was um, 
I think Jay Z was talking to some lady. It was like the wife of some NB, uh, NBA yes. team owner. They was all up in her comments. With and the they memes. were like, they found her number, leaked her number, sent her death threats, things like that. And the woman was like crying because it's like, I mean, you don't. At the end of the day, you don't really know these people, and to yeah. be doing all that just seems very drastic to me. Yeah, it's it like there's other drastic. people that end up being impacted. I feel like even more so than the artists. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. Well, they they be ready to fight the shit. So. <laughs> they do be ready to fight. They be like, I, I, I'm not going to try to defend anybody on like trying to do any of that, any of that foolishness. But I do think the reason for that is, uh, in the in the sense that I can see it from like the a bar perspective, I think the reason for that is a lot of the times um, since, since standing culture has become like a, a big thing, it's always like other people coming in trying to attack you, attack you or say something about the artist that you like. If you've been liking Beyonce since Destiny's Child or whatever, right? That's a long, long ass time to be liking somebody. So if someone's like doing something to her and you feel like ain't nobody else really given the, given the, the right narrative or the actual narrative and like talking about like the actual facts and like what's going on and actually defending her like she should be defended, you, you feel a, li a little bit more protective of her and then you trying to get out there and be like, well, ain't nobody else going to do it, so I might as well motherfucking do it. And then you start trying to fight. But it's more than one person spreading that narrative, and then they're bullying the other person that has a counter narrative. And then I, 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 beefs like, get started. Uh, like, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't believe in bull. I like a lot of, I feel like a lot of stands like cause beef between artists yes. in a sense. Like, like the Cardi and Nicki. They, they go hard because the artists go hard. One, I just feel like it's disrespectful. <laughs> I feel like it's disrespectful in a sense just because, like, to compare Cardi, who has been in the game and doesn't even write her own raps, to Nicki Minaj, who has yeah. been in the game for like a minute. Like, I think yeah. that's disrespectful. So I was like low key turned into a bar. Yeah. I go hard for Nicki Minaj just because she's a black woman. Yeah. And like, when it comes to black women, like, I do get a little stinnish because it's just like, who's going to protect us? Yeah. So it's just like, I have to come in and be like, come on now. Right. Come on now, y'all. Like, Even with the Nicki Party thing, I think there's yeah, a lot of factors, yeah. so I don't want to get into that because that's a whole <laughs> like, debate in itself. I, that that's is a, a whole debate. debate. Yeah. That is a whole but debate I will itself. say, I do think stand culture definitely helped yeah. perpetuate and extend that beef past yeah. what it was. Yeah. Like after the whole situation happened at the Met Gala, even after that whole situation, yeah, it was I kind of feel like it's even now, there's still a back and forth between yeah. the both fan it's, groups. It's a, it's a shit show. And it's like you just pull up stuff. Oh, even like the little thing. Oh, she said such and such. So she must have been Me, talking about her. her. Yeah. And it gets to the point. It's just like, yeah. that's when I feel like it gets out of hand. Yeah. There's one negative side to, um, to these fandoms and stan culture that I kind of want to address. And I know you guys were saying, you know, a lot of times it's because you feel connected to that artist, but then there are people who really like an artist, but really hate their actions. Can you really yeah. separate the art from the artist? I don't think you can. That's why I've been disappointed in Nicki Minaj lately, just in like her dating choices. I'm gonna just be honest. Like, I don't really like, like that. Don't. Like, Okay, Do I, okay like, <laughs> I don't like that. I've been disappointed in that. Not as far as her craft, because she's very good at her work. She like, is. I listen to the Queen album, and this is that. I still follow her. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, she you know what I mean? Good. Like, she looked good. Like, she rapped good. Like, I, I'm not attacking. Okay. Okay. I see, I see it in your face that you're ready to come in my day. You about to defend. But, like, Kim sometimes Kitty. it's hard to separate. But then, like, I was having a conversation with somebody, and they were like, we always blame women for the things that their man do. Like, nobody out here attacking Kenneth like about what he did or whatever. Mm -hmm. They I, I immediately associate Nicki Minaj with what, what you call it. But when Jay-Z did that NFL deal and people were mad about that, they wasn't attacking Beyonce, was they? Like, no. I feel like some. I feel like for some reason, there's this special thing with Nicki Minaj where they like attach her to the men in her life. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, like she has had like a repeated behavior of like, I feel like working with 6 9 and working with Chris Brown a lot, like men that constantly disrespect women in a certain sense and then you're dating, it just looks bad on mm -hmm. her kind of a thing so like but also we do we all often like I feel like she often like receives the short end of the stick regardless like yeah but in this I'm, I'm trying I'm trying because I know you about to take my head off once I'm done like <laughs> so like yeah so I feel like I cannot it's, it's very hard for me to separate the art from the artist sometimes it's just like because if I do it I don't separate the art from the artist for like let's say Chris Brown you know what I mean like I feel like He's trash in a sense to me, like, 
as like a person of his actions and stuff like that and the way he disrespects black women. And I just don't feel it. So I don't listen to his music because it's hard for me to detach the two. So I have to keep that same energy across the board. I can't pick and choose who I'm not gonna hold accountable for their actions. So I try to hold Nicki Minaj accountable for her actions. It's such and such, it's such and such. And if Jungle Pussy came out tomorrow and said something like homophobic, transphobic, then like that's gonna affect my stand, like my like the way I like feel about her in yeah. a sense. Like I'm gonna hold her accountable. I'm never not gonna hold you accountable. If you do something problematic, like I have to hold you accountable because I can't just pick and choose and be like, oh well, I don't like you, so you did this, this, and that, and that. Like. No, like that's just not. I just feel like it needs to be across the board. You have yeah. to hold these artists accountable. Even if you love them, you have to hold them but accountable. But people don't. People, people don't, don't hold do them that. accountable. Yeah. And kind of to the Chris Brown point, or even like the R. Kelly thing. Yeah. Like I feel like, like you said, people kind of pick and choose who they're going to support and who they're not. And you do. But then that brings up the question of how bad does it have to be that, how bad should the action be to stop supporting them altogether? That is true. That that becomes the question. How is, bad is the action? What sh what could they have done that is, at that point, when do you say I'm done supporting you? Obviously, I feel like with the Chris Brown situation, R. Kelly, that's a completely different right, conversation. Yeah. But I mean, with a lot of these artists, we don't really know what they do behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I I will, I will say for me, right. The first the thing with Nicki Minaj, she. She has multiple times come out and, and like clarified about it, ab about like about the stuff with him overall and like how and like the actual history and the story behind that stuff um, before. So as a as a, as somebody with that, I think that um, that I I separate people. Okay, I don't separate anybody um, from their actual actions that they do. But if they say, oh, this is actually what this is, this is how such as such as learned, this is how I learned, this is da 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 da. I'll take it into consideration and be like, all right, you've actually done something to try to improve yourself or try to like come from that. And I'm not about to continuously um, look onto your past and be like, okay, so from, from now to the day that you die, you're gonna have to address this every single time, right? So, but like with, with Chris Brown, I don't listen to his music either like that. Um, maybe I don't even know the last thing he made, but. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> but, but um, with him, I don't know. I don't know if if he has done enough for me to feel like he's um, he's come a long way from the way that he's done, from like what he's done and what he's and what he's been doing. So that's why I don't stand uh, or even like look at him anymore. Um, and and that's just something that I I also feel like you can't really separate the artist from the art because that is that is literally saying. That you support whatever whatever it is. Um, if it's a um, a pedophile doing any of anything, you'd be like, oh, bro, I can't give him the money anymore. Yeah. You if you, say that. yeah, if you're like, oh, such and such did da 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 da, this pedophile did this, but I really like like the the movie that they made or this yeah. da da da. I'm I'm still gonna give them my my twenty nine ninety nine or whatever it costs. <laughs> and you're, you're just like, okay, so you're saying, oh, I allow it, I allow it. But look at these Hollywood directors. How many of them have been either convicted or there's yeah. allegations about them, you know, partaking in sexual assault, sexual harassment, or pedophilia, mm -hmm. you know, all under the umbrella, and then people are still watching their movies. Are we separating the art from the artist in that case? Right. Is it we different when it's music? You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's a, it's a lot harder to, like, pick point, like, I can't name like 10 directors off yeah. the top of my head, but I can name 10 like, cause they're more so in the public yeah. eye. So I feel like it's mis people aren't informed about the things that Music people do. Is, yeah. Like, a lot more personal cause you have the, cause Nicki Minaj, you see the, you see the face. Yeah. Um, Jungle Pussy, you see the, the face. face. Yeah. Like you going to see Jungle Pussy in concert. Yeah. But if you go and see uh, a, movie, a movie, you don't see, Tim Burton. But, and you were in, you know, but you, you never know. If there are a certain type like, of way, could there be general tones within their film of certain ideas? You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, that is true. So that's, that's like, that is true. That's what I'm saying. Like, um, to that sense, anything, that's when I'm, I think if the director or producers or whatever makes, it, it gets harder with movies because there's so many people involved in that, right? Like, so some people might not actually know about it. Or like, or know them to know anything about it, or they might hear something. They're just like, "Well, I can't really do anything because this is my intro job, and I'm just trying to get money, and I'm trying to get my face out, and I'm just trying to do what I'm trying to do." Right. So, so to that extent, you can't. We can't fault all of them, 
But I do feel that the issue becomes with, with, with that is so many, so many people feel that um, if you say, oh, don't do this, it's like you're forcing them into like not being able to, to support something or you're trying to make them follow your rules or your point of view and stuff like that. So they get a little bit more tribal in the sense of being like, I'm just going to do what I want to do. I want to support who I want to support. You don't know if that's true. Da, 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 da. Oh, I don't know. Um, the Me Too movement is doing this, that, that, and the third. And people doing this, that, and the third. And we, we too, too politically correct. I think for me, I don't participate in stand culture or even cancel culture to a degree. I don't. That's a whole that's thing. That's a whole thing. That's because a hot ass mess. For me, I don't put these people on a pedestal. Yeah. Like, yes, you're a celebrity. That's the problem. I think we put these celebrities on too much of a pedestal, and we expect too much from them when, yeah. essentially, like you said, they're still human. Mm -hmm. Especially with, like, for example, the Jay-Z deal that you had brought up earlier. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were mad at him. I didn't get upset. You know why? Because I, I don't expect much from Jay-Z Jay <laughs> as an artist. <laughs> who is He's been like that. Know, he like has been I'm like surprised. that. Right. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, hold on. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, as somebody who's benefiting from capitalism, and I'm not saying if... We don't know what he's going to do with, the, you know, this deal or not. So yeah. I don't want to say that he's going to do one thing or the other. But I think my issue is people expecting too much from him when yeah. he is a, an artist. Specifically in the black community, we don't have a lot of leaders. leaders yeah. And so sometimes we look to these entertainers yeah. and people who are famous mm -hmm. in a leadership light. And I don't think that should always be the case. I'm not saying some of them can't use their platform for good, yeah. but should we expect all of them I don't, to be I don't doing think that? I think I, I, say, I think the, the thing with Jay-Z is that, um, yes, he's an, an entertainer, but, but when the last time he made anything, but let's not even get into that. But also... What? No. <laughs> no, no, no but we're gonna, you gotta go with that one. Like that. No, he right. He got some hits. Okay, you might have some hits, but when, <laughs> it, when You might have some hits, but when the last time you did anything recently? Exactly. Okay, bye. Other than having to do it with Beyonce. Right, there's hey, definitely... Hey, you do it, Jay-Z, so I, dirty. You didn't but, listen to 444? I'm no, not gonna do this with gonna, you. We're gonna move on to, to, to it being like the you reason. Don't like Jay -Z. I don't. The reason <laughs> that's that people, all that is. I don't. I don't like a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason people put him up on a pedestal or like try to treat him as a leader is because my man came into came into it pretending that he was going to to change some stuff. That he was like being more pro pro black, right? So if you come in with that and you're and you say, oh, the new the new path that I'm doing is we're we're trying to be more more pro-black, more uplifting mm -hmm. to that, to the community, da 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 da. But when you do something like that and work with the NFL, and when they have consistently um, been oppressing yeah. black people, or pe uh, people of color, period. Yeah, yeah. it just looks fishy. That it, it looks does. fishy, and then people get upset at you, because now you're like, this is me. This is me. But are we surprised? And, then, like and then you pull the, you pull the, the mask off, and you're like, nah, I was really penny-wise the whole time. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying people shouldn't hold his feet to the fire because I feel like even his fans have kind of like said, yeah, this. but that's the that. thing. Like, are, you have to be able to, if you're going to be a fan, I do feel like you should critique to a degree, mm -hmm. but then there's a fine line with that too. Cause I feel like social media just has allowed people to just get in people's comment sections yeah. and going off on folks like. And it's because there's not an actual, there's no consequences to social media. You don't have to, you don't actually have to put your face to it. You don't have to put your name to it. So yeah. no one can come up on you and say, oh, you said X, Y, and Z. You did da, 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 da. So it's like, there's no, none of that pressure or that like, um, any of that to be like, oh, I can't really say this. So people feel, they feel very emboldened to just say whatever they want to well, say. Yeah. yeah, they like, and it's like that human aspect. Like sometimes I just like, uh, the internet is full of bullies. Like, why are y'all so angry? Like, yeah. who did you need some hugs growing up? Like, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, some of them, no, some they, of them, I, listen, I don't want to be this person, but some of them ain't got no life. And then they just be you excited click on to the page and it's like two followers yes. and then like a little picture or something like a banana or I don't know. It's yes. just weird. Of, like I, I believe a lot of them people who are not that aggressive online don't have don't feel like they have an actual voice in real life to be able oh, to say what they yeah. want to say. So when they get onto the internet and they have other other um, fan or stands with them behind them and be like, Oh, this is my community, then they can say whatever they want to say. I saw this study by Pew Research, they were saying like fifty nine percent of bullying um, is cyberbullying, and then like 41% is like offensive names or something like that. And I wondered, it kind of made me wonder, like, I think that was from like 2018, if contributing, I mean, obviously there might not be a direct correlation, so I don't want to say that, like, I didn't study it. But I do feel like um, 
I feel like saying culture could have a lot to do with that. Because I feel like, uh, listen, a large percentage of bullying that I see on my timeline, yeah, it has, it's related to memes too, but I think sometimes staying culture definitely falls into that. You can't, you can't criticize anybody yeah. without somebody having something sometimes to say. Sometimes when people think that they're like, their fave is be above critique, like they can't be criticized. Yes. Like, and I feel like everybody's fave needs, like, can be criticized. Like, yes. at the end of the day, like, we're not, we're all human, so we're not perfect, but then also like holding that artist accountable and being like, hey, like this wasn't cool is like something that is kind of necessary. We should want to hold certain artists accountable. But then like, it's, there's like this thin line but like, between like critiquing people and just outright just being like being a little hateful. ruthless. Ruthless yeah, but and I, hateful and like, I, it's just a bit much. Like, but even in the cases where it's like, it's not, I wanna kind of touch on that Wanda's World thing. Do you remember that? Which, it was a um, black editorial writer, female, and she wrote about Nikki in a respectful way. And I think, and it's not a critique on Nikki and it's not a critique on the woman, but the fans. Oh, the because fans. the fans kind of came in and just attacked the journals, like attacked yeah. that woman and got her fired from her job. Like, it's stuff like that. Well, I wonder what the article was about. What was it about? I read it. It was just saying she wanted different type of content. Oh, like from her age. Like it was about her age. Yeah. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. I disagree with that article too, but I was about to attack But I don't, like she, <laughs> I don't feel like she came at it in, in a, a disrespectful, disrespectful way. way. But, okay. okay. Yeah. And as a music critique, somebody, if you're in that field and you're critiquing, I feel like you have that right. And I don't even I, think I, Nikki I, was that pressed about it. No. Like Nikki um, probably didn't. Actually. Was she? I, I will, okay, I will say this. <laughs> she had to let's get off the top of your day. <laughs> let's, let's run. Let's run for the hills because the bar. <laughs> I do have a question though. I, yeah, right there because let me stop for. <laughs> was Nikki that pressed about it though or did her fans make it to where Tag she was in. pressed about Tag it? In. Tag in. I just want to say first that <laughs> if, again, if, if, I think we are we are so aggressive as as Barb's because it seems like from from a very it seems like from a like a from a very early start that she has always been getting pushed down right yeah. so if for the past ten years or so whatever she's been um, popular we have been consistently fighting back about um, for people about her right about every little thing about being like oh. Um, she's she's a little Kim clone. She's a Remy Ma clone. She did did did. She did did did. Da, 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 da. And every time you can say what you want, Mama already no. You, I saw the face. Mama already said she was inspired by little Kim and Remy Ma. She gave the the props yeah, that she had to give. Receipt, like but when credit. when Sis came out of jail, nobody was checking for her, so she felt some type of way okay, and felt like this, she had to start a beef. This but is not a Nicki Minaj episode. no. But, but <laughs> let, me tell you let me let me tell you something. 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 I do feel like you're needed in order to, like you said, change the narrative of what people say about her. I do think she deserves yeah. and needs that support. Mm -hmm. I do feel like sometimes it becomes borderline too much, it but is, I, 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 I get what you're saying. But to orient the discussion in a different <laughs> way, I do wanna know, do you guys feel like there, that stand culture could be dismantled or possibly even should it be done away with? Like, do you really, is it needed? Mm -mm. And in can a, you get rid of it? In a sense, I feel like it. I don't know if it's, I'm a little in the mix of the middle. Cause just like, to a sense, like, I feel like we need to be, I feel like we don't have a lot of leaders and that's why where these things come from, where people mm -hmm. put these artists on a pedestal, where they're above critique and this, this and that. And like, I think there, that speaks for itself that we kind of need to either like find that leader within ourselves, or like, sometimes I feel like a lot of people who are like, who might be like the obsessive, like crazy stand, I guess, if that's what we're calling it. Um, there's something wrong with them person the inside for you to be that mean or like to be that cruel towards somebody else um but as far as like and since I like I said I respect it because they do the work I'm not going to do we need yeah. the receipts because without the receipts like these false narratives of certain artists would like continue and like they would be per perpetuated in a negative light yeah um because there are a lot of artists that like misinformation with social media like yes. it spread like this so people will like instantly say something about something and like it'll blow out of proportion and it might not even canceled. be true. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then, exactly. And then people will get canceled like this, that, and the other. And you want these false narratives. I feel like the truth right. deserves to be told. Yeah. But in a certain way, I feel like in a sense, like, y'all ain't gotta be taking people's heads off. Like y'all don't have no. to be so disrespectful, so hateful. And that like comes from an interpersonal, like that's the kind of person that you are. I'm not like 
I'm, I feel like I'm like solid within myself to where I don't have to spew hate at somebody when I'm trying to defend. When I try to defend any artist that I like, whether that be Jungle Pussy, Nicki Minaj, or any of that, like I don't say it in a hateful way. I bring the receipts, and you can say what you want about that, but I'm not about to start attacking you, coming for your lace front or whatever I don't right. like about you. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna do that. I think <laughs> then you have to define. You have to clearly define what a stand is, because to me, if we're going based off of that 2000 Eminem video, I don't know if y'all ever seen it, but I'm gonna y'all go watch it. I feel like if you're going off of that video, then what you're describing is not a stand. Yeah. It's a supporter or a fan. Yeah, a and stand. that's what I am, so like I can right. only speak from that. And I feel like even these peop people who consider themselves barbs, I feel like some of them or you know, believers or if people even do that anymore. I don't know if people, beehive, you know. I think there's like, even within those fandoms, there's fans and there's stands. I don't think, I don't feel like they're all stands in my yeah. opinion. I don't think people really understand what a stand is. So I feel like we just kind of throw the term around now yeah. in a way that we didn't used to. Um, I think there just has to be, so I feel like kind of with that being said, you can get, a, get rid of stand culture. I think the I think a big thing with with it is like to some extent the artist should step in eventually or at some point and like try to talk to their fans about how they address other people and like the the, the type of narrative that they want them to, to do because Taylor Swift uh, their fan her fans aren't that rude and ruthless to people um, and all that like th there are, there are groups of people or fans or sta uh, fandoms that aren't super rude and like ruthless or whatever right. Yeah. So I think at t to some point they just need to stand in. But I also don't think standing is ever gonna really go away just for the fact that like, there is so much access and so much um, to, these to, the, to these artists. Yeah. And like, th there's always trying to, people are always trying to make that personal connection if, if it's a, a, a small artist with the people that do support them. Mm -hmm. So those people are gonna become stands because they're like, oh, I've been with you since before you got famous and da da da. So I don't really think it's gonna go away, but I do think what needs to happen is that there needs to be some type of um, talk about like how to stop being disrespectful and rude to people. Yeah, I agree. I think people are getting a little too personal with the, with these artists, and I feel like they deserve their privacy as well yeah, from their own true. fan base. Maybe, you know, yeah. even when it comes to relationships, like you guys were talking about. I mean, it's kind of like a. I imagine the artist probably has a very love hate relationship with their fandom. I would imagine. Of course. You know. Yeah. But it's good that she has y'all. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> would be too. Y'all be going for her neck too. I'd be like, dang. We understand each other. Well, <laughs> I want to thank my two guests for coming. It was a wonderful conversation. Very entertaining. Um, and thank you guys for tuning in for this week. Uh, next week, we are going to be talking about mental health. I'm really excited for that, kind of bringing a fresh take on it so you don't want to miss out. And I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye. <laughs>